Between September 1984 and May 1985, close to 150 councillors have their homes or businesses destroyed. To assess the gains it has made and to find ways of taking the struggle to new heights, the ANC organises a national consultative conference in Kabwe, Zambia in June 1985. Overall, the conference agrees on the need to intensify all elements of the people's war in order to make South Africa ungovernable. An important outcome at the Kabwe conference is, however, the decision that soldiers of Umkonto we Sizwe no longer have to differentiate between hard and soft targets during armed activities. Many of the people speaking there were saying that we needed to up the struggle, intensify it, not hold back by being too concerned about the, what the Americans, I don't like the term, would call collateral damage. No distinction was made between civilian and military targets, and the aims were to sow fear and terror. They resorted to the use of car bombs, landmines, limpet mines, hand grenades, and other explosive devices. Regardless whether defenseless civilians, including women or children, were killed or maimed, a significant number of civilians, including women and children, were killed during these attacks. We thought that some of the things we were doing were actually, we, were, we looked like fighting with one hand tied to the back. And, and we had to take decisions like the one we took about farmers. We wanted to take the struggle to the wide areas such that if, they are, if, if anybody dies in the crossfire, it should not just be Africans who die in the crossfire. You know, the essence of a people's war, it regards all the people living in the area of conflict as combatants who are expendable in the war in the same way as arms and ammunitions are expendable in a conventional conflict. So a people's war cannot really distinguish between hard and soft targets. A people's war, by definition, will use civilians in any way it can and will draw um, as much propaganda uh, advantage out of civilian deaths as it can. The decision on hard and soft targets at the Kabwe conference is partly sparked by an event that happened two years before, when a car bomb was set off during rush hour in front of the South African Air Force headquarters in Church Street, Pretoria. In the case of the Church Street car bomb incident, a vehicle with a powerful load of explosives was detonated around 4 o'clock in the afternoon in front of the NetBank Square building and altogether 19 persons were brutally killed. 12 of them were civilians and 7 members of the Defence Force. 219 were uh, severely injured, of which 217 were civilians and two members of the Defence Force. In that case, the police had together the uh, parts of the body which were spread over a large distance and uh, to put it in a plastic bag. Shortly after the Carveway Conference, the ANC's new plan of ungovernability starts to escalate and the policy on soft targets is put into action. A total of 136 bomb attacks is recorded in 1985, up from only 44 in 1984. Civilian casualties rise sharply. Another bomb attack shocks the country, this time in a Manzim Toti. A bomb explodes in a restaurant in a shopping center on the 23rd of December 1985, while people are up and about doing their Christmas shopping. The bomber is ANC Youth League member Andrew Zondo. 
Zondo is arrested soon after the attack, trailed and executed. The sentence is handed down by Judge Ramon Leon, whose son will later become the leader of South Africa's opposition party. My father was a Supreme Court judge for over 22 years in Natal, and he uh, was opposed to the death penalty, but felt that uh, in, he was obliged under his oath of office to impose a sentence when, in this case, there was murder without extenuating circumstances. So the issue with the Zondo case was uh, exactly that. It was a shopping centre in the middle of a Mams and Toti, uh, which was frequented by whites, Indians, blacks, just on the night before Christmas Eve. So there was no military or strategic object. It was intended to induce terror. Yeah, well, of course it was controversial. And, and, and Andrew himself apologised, if you recall, for, the, for that action. But the fact that Andrew Zondo was engaged in such an act does not, does not make him an, an outcast in our own uh, vocabulary. He's still our hero, he's still a hero, I agree. Uh, but of course, it, the, the action itself was unfortunate. The ANC later accepts responsibility for the attack and even changes the name of Amanzim Toti's main street from Kingsway to Andro Zondo Street. <laughs>